bit of a different one today. I'm going to uh, take some hard facing rods and repair some damage that happened to the top die on the Massey. There won't be any actual anvil repairs in this video, but I do feel that the repair that I'm going to do on the power hammer die is very similar to the way that you might do a repair on an anvil like this. Now this anvil does need some repairs doing to it and I will be doing those repairs. Whether I do or do not make, make a video on the subject depends on whether or not you like this video. If we can get up to a thousand likes on this video, I will make a repair video where I show you how to fix up the damage that's on this anvil here. So we had a bit of an accident with one of the kiss blocks, completely innocent, could have happened to anyone uh, as we were working, um, or as Elliot was working, uh, the material expanded and it pushed the kiss block out as it was coming down quite quickly. As it came down, it just caught the side of the heat treated kiss block and just chipped the side off. Now, I think this probably happened more to do with the fact there's a bit of mushroom in on here, but I've gone around and tidied that up already. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these heat, uh, these hard facing rods, a 350 rod. Um, I'm gonna put these in and hopefully we're gonna get rid of this little gap. I'm then just gonna tidy it all up, make sure it's all nice and tidy. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. These are the electrodes I'm gonna be using for this project. This was a gift sent to me uh, by a good friend of the channel and a good friend of mine, uh, George Griffiths. Thank you very much for these, George. Uh, you're a star. For this project, we're going to be using the uh, three Hard Rod 350, I know there's gonna be some giggles, Ben especially, um, uh, but there was also these H, HV 600s in the box as well. Can you see that, HV 600s? They were also in the box there as well. So massive thank you to George for sending me. Now I've done a little bit of research on the rods. I'm gonna quickly talk about the rods and things that we do need to do and why we need to do them and if you're gonna start welding up big old holes and stuff, uh, why you shouldn't just be using these rods you need to start filling them in with something else. So we're just gonna go over that just quickly. Okay, I should have done a little bit of research before we started slamming into the project uh, because um, after actually having a look on the internet, I found that the 350 electros, these ones here, are uh, not quite suitable for impact and they only have a Rockwell of 335. Uh, um, we'll see how we get on. If it is a problem, it will just chip out. I can cut it out anyway. If it's only 35 Rockwell, those ceramic discs I started using, they'll eat through that, no worries. However, what I should have used is these HV 600s here. Uh, they have a Rockwell rating of up to 60 Rockwell, which is uh, very good. And they're also impact, um, they, they're good for impact scenarios and apparently good for machining as well. So a little bit of a boo-boo to start with, I should have used the 600s, but that's not a problem. They are both hard facing rods and as of yet, I'm filming this um, after actually making the video initially and doing the repairs, the, uh, the dies are holding up very, very nicely. Now, if you're gonna fill in a big hole, now, if you can get your thumb in it, it's probably too big to start using these. You don't wanna layer up more than two layers of the hard facing material, because as it cools, when it comes out, it'll just crack and rip itself out. So you don't wanna do that. What you actually wanna do is something called buttering. Um, and buttering is the process of using MIG or a normal stick welder to just fill in the gap that you've got and then cover it with a cap of hard facing. That way you're not gonna cause yourself any problems. Okay, so I'm just preheating everything. I'm preheating the rods and I'm also preheating the block. Now, I don't want to get this too hot. I'm just trying to get it into a condition where we're A, burning all of the oil out and all of the moisture so that this adheres nicely and B, so that we get really good penetration uh, of our rod. So I'm gonna keep going over this a couple of times. I want this hot enough so I can't touch it, but um, not so hot that we start getting those temper colors through.
Okay, this is the AC-DC inverter uh, that I used to weld up the uh, power hammer die. Um, it's single phase, uh, it's running on 240 volts and it's got a 32 amp breaker. Um, so we can really push some juice through it. Uh, it's the SIP T214, um, very reliable bit of kit, very cheap. Um, I've hardly had any problems with it, there's no bells and whistles, there's nothing particularly fancy about it, it does everything uh, that you would expect from an AC-DC inverter, I can do aluminium, um, TIG welding, uh, it's, it's just a good all round machine, it's been very reliable, only problem I've had actually is the potentiometer there, uh, if you if you <laughs> if you a bit quick with it, it does all sorts of crazy things and then sometimes it moves on its own when we're welding. I do think it's the potential that's a problem. I don't think it's more serious than that. Uh, but, yeah, good machine. I'll just quickly go over how I've set it up, where, what, um, what uh, amps I used uh, when we were doing the weld and why I changed it. I started at 100 amps when I initially put the weld in, but as I was drawing away, um, when I was getting to the end of the weld, I noticed that the puddle was getting bigger and more material was disappearing into uh, the actual um, the actual die itself so I thought I'll turn it down a little bit and I actually run it at 90 so we started at 100 and I I ended up running it at 90 I think it because of, because this is quite a bit of a pain in the bum to set up I think it was running at 85 86 85 and then when I came back to it it was at 90 so um, yeah, I yeah. So basically, and I think that was because I preheated the block. I think that's where the problem came from. Um, I also run it in DC. Uh, on the data sheets for those rods, they both said to uh, run them in DC, DC positive as well. Uh, so yeah, that's basically how I set it up. Very pleased with that, that's come out quite lovely. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to budge. Um, hard facing rods are normally used for high abrasive um, stuff like that. I don't, I don't think they're used very often for high impact. Uh, but we will see, see what happens. This part of the anvil doesn't work that hard anyway. Uh, I said that, it's the place where all the kiss spots go. Anyway, um, we'll see how we get on, see if it pops out, see if it cracks. I think it's going to be pretty good. I think I might have said at the beginning of the video some of this was filmed retrospectively. It's been about a fortnight since I did the initial repair and to be honest we haven't had any problems. So whether or not that hard facing rod was the right one or the wrong one to go in there is doing its job up until this point. If it does come out I will let you know and fix it up and go over that process. I'll use those HV600s. I don't want it to be too hard, I think that might cause problems in the future but we'll see how we get on. Um, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notification and stuff like that. There's a Patreon and Etsy and some other good stuff down in the description. There'll also be some links to where you can pick up those hard facing rods uh, and stuff like that. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. See you later. Bye bye.